Let me tell you about the time and the day that I died. I had a memory when I was nine years old. And I remember my parents fighting in the middle of the night. My older sister, Diane, told me to go in the house so people would hear me. So I ran in the house. I ran to the bathroom screaming still, just couldn't stop, and got down on my knees and closed my eyes. I put my hands together and said, God, if you exist, if you love me, you'll take me away from this life. Now I'm going to count to 10, and when I open my eyes, I want to be gone. You hear me? And I opened my eyes, and I was still there. On top of that, your father also was an alcoholic, right? Yeah. And he beat your mother, so you yeah. had to live with that abuse as well. What kind of a scar has that left in terms of dealing with that? What did you do as a child as you saw your father beating your mother? The only thing I knew how to do was to just stand there and, and be frightened, and to go to school with that trauma, to go to school being hungry, to go to school smelling. How did you rise out of that anger of the injustice? Oh my God. I don't necessarily feel like I'm out of the anger. He left me right there, so when I gained vision and strength and forgiveness, I can remember what it means to be a child who was hungry. I could remember what it means to be in trauma. I could remember poverty, alcoholism. I could remember what it means to be a child who dreams and sees no physical manifestation of it. I could remember because I lived it. I was there. We would go to bed and hear rats killing the pigeons in the roof. I mean, loud, squealing noises. We would wrap our sheets around our necks at night because the rats would crawl through holes in the wall and they would, you could hear them eating our toys at night and um, jumping on top of our beds. I always say that I was a bedwetter until I was 14. And I did everything to get food. I've stolen for food. I've jumped in huge garbage bins with maggots for food. And I sacrificed a childhood for food and grew up in immense shame. The one thing that I learned when I was poor, and this is something that people just need to say out loud, okay, is that you are invisible. Nobody sees you. You know, they say that the two most important days in a person's life is the day you were born and the day you discover why you were born. I absolutely knew I wanted to be an actor because I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to dream big and make a mark somehow. What is that one element that literally helps that kid who has nothing achieve ultimate success what is that one factor and they always say it's one person who was a mentor i saw miss cicely tyson in the autobiography of miss jane pittman and i saw a physical manifestation of a dream i saw something that i could put my feet on the floor when i got out of bed in the morning and i had a passion that could drive me just drive that's it but at 28 i crashed and burned because emotionally I didn't get out. But as much as I didn't want to be my mother's daughter, I was very much my mother's daughter. I was still very much traumatized by the past. I very much was that little girl running from eight to nine boys who were always calling me, you black, ugly n****. You're ugly, you're black, you're this. It still very much was internalized in me and it manifested itself through low self-esteem, through bad relationships, with not believing in myself. How did you get out of that darkness into the light, into the dream? Two things, okay? Number one, there's a difference between having a goal and having a purpose. It's a vision for a future that is living a life that is heroic. The other part of it is understanding your mortality, that you have a dash of time, 
And what do you want to do? How do you want to run this leg of your race? Everybody in this room, I'm sure at some point, has gone through something in their lives and you've survived it. But not only did you survive it, you took that trauma, that hurt, that revelation or whatever it was, and you used it to connect, to give, to influence. I have a picture of you. Oh my God. What message you have for that girl? I have a message for that girl. History is not the past. It is the present. The world is broken because we are broken. Who said that all of who you are has to be good? All of who you are is who you are. How about owning it? Owning all of it, the good and the bad. Own every heroic deed and experiences, even if they were traumatic. Own it. And then you, you seize the sword. No one and nothing can be great unless it costs you something. The living life for something bigger than yourself is a hero's journey. You have only to follow the thread of the hero path. Your existence is an amalgamation of every triumph, every hard-won battle. And yet here you are, privileged, blessed, to do what?